Hey, what's up, YouTube? Uh, this is Paul here, broadcasting from quarantined Tokyo. Actually, it's not so bad com compared to other countries where they're on lockdown, and um, I'm not really sure if uh, in Japan if things are a bit more laxed because um, they want to try to keep the Olympics going. I'm guessing that there are a lot of people out there who are stuck at home watching Netflix, going through a bunch of YouTube videos, bored out of their skull. So today I thought I'd share with you some of the um, background of the tools that I've I used, some of the cameras that I used uh, for my upcoming exhibition. I hope that exhibition is going to go on which is scheduled to uh, start April 4th and going on for a month um, through May 6th. Personally, I'm really into uh, former East German camera gear, film, etc. Um, particularly Orvo. And there are a lot of um, East German cameras that I think many people really don't know about. You often hear of the big names, yeah, like uh, Canon, Nikon. For this exhibition I wanted to have fun. I wanted to use cameras from East Germany and film which have which has legacy from East Germany simply because they're not so popular. Some of the cameras that I use for this project are And finally, this Pentacon Prakti, Prakti 2. Now I want to tell you specifically about this, this camera because it has a kind of interesting story behind it. I got this camera on eBay. This was back in mid-December or so, last year. Before I bought it, I checked it out of course, and it said working condition. I contacted the seller and I asked, is this camera working? I even sent a YouTube, an unlisted YouTube video link of how to check the camera, what does this camera look like when it's functioning. Because some sellers say, you know, it's not tested. So I put together a simple video of how to test it. Anyway, I sent the video to this seller and the seller replied, yes, it's working fine. So I went ahead and bought it. It arrived maybe 10, 12 days later. P well packed, it was great. And I did an unboxing video of that, not for YouTube, but more of evidence to show to the seller just in case something happened. Even though the seller said that it's working fine, I just want to take precaution. I, I, I received the package. I open it up, I'm really excited. I put the batteries inside and nothing, nothing, it, was, it wasn't working. I tried another set of batteries, it wasn't working. I tried to clean the contacts of the, uh, the battery contacts, that didn't work. It was a completely dead camera. I tried everything, I fiddled around with it, nothing, yeah. I contacted the seller, camera's not working, what's going on? I put a link an unlist to an unlisted video showing that it's not working. No reply. A week later, sent off another message. Hey, what's going on? And this was again in December. So I thought maybe the seller is busy with the holidays. So I'll wait until after Christmas. Um, so again, maybe the 27th, I fired off another message. Hey, I sent you two messages already. What's going on? No reply. Fourth message. I got a little bit more kind of aggressive and I said, hey, you know, if you're not going to reply to this message, um, I'm going to have to escalate this matter to with, with eBay. Still no reply. New Year's passes on. Maybe it's about January 7th by this time. I had also kind of like forgotten about it because I was busy as well and, you know, it wasn't such a huge loss. It was just, I think, maybe $25. So maybe the first week of January, I filed the complaint with eBay. Finally, the seller responds and says, you know, I don't know what you did with the camera, but it was working fine. 
um, when I sent it off. And I countered, I said, well, look at the video. It's not working. I said, look, meet me halfway. Just refund me the shipping cost and I'll take a hit. I'll, I'll, I'll accept this dead camera. Just refund me a portion of, you know, out of a, out of good faith, you know. No response. Where's the honesty and integrity of people these days? Then finally, eBay refunded me everything. I was really surprised. They, they refunded me for the, the price of the camera and the shipping. I thought, wow, good job eBay. So that was settled. So it's been over a month and a half now since when I first bought this camera. And I put in some batteries again just to like test it out. It started working. Yeah. It started functioning. And I thought, holy cow, it is working. But then when I opened it up, yeah, it was it was it was moving. It sounds like it's moving. But you can't really see here. It was moving but the shutter remained closed despite the movement yeah in fact it was a kind of lemon camera or it is a kind of like defective camera the seller probably thought oh yeah it's working but the shutter was not opening up so i thought oh that's strange you know it's a it's a really old camera this is from like 1965 or so i know i had no plans to try to get this repaired because it's yeah these are cheap cameras right uh so what i did was i tried to clean it with some ethanol you know i tried to use a q-tip in there and it wouldn't work so what i did was i would take the cap and i filled it maybe halfway just a, just a bit and i poured it directly into the into the shutter and then it started opening up i thought oh great it was just maybe just kind of stuck or something and i'd fire it and i'd fire it i'd fire it press the shutter 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 it would open up but then i think as the ethanol dried up it would close up again now it would get stuck you would see it i would put i would put the camera on bulb or b and um, you could see that it's kind of like stuck for about a week I was just dumping ethanol in there. It would leak some oil or residue would even leak out of the camera, like black. I could feel it on my fingers, yeah. I could see it too. I'd dump it in there, um, I'd leave it overnight, try it out in the morning, etc., and, and just repeat. And then finally, it just, it just remained constantly open it, it functioned well yeah and I thought oh great it, it works fine now however this car this camera it's auto exposure there are no aperture or shutter controls the selenium meter the light meter was working fine and so what I did was I put in a roll and I tested it out and I printed the contact sheet and here it is. Some images came out. I thought, wow, amazing. You've got some shots which are underexposed, some are look, look overexposed, some look okay. However, in the dark room, I was able to uh, make some prints. And um, I could of course adjust the, uh, ex the, uh, the contrast. Here are some of the shots. So for this whole series, I used Orvo N75 as well as all these East 
former East German cameras. So that was the kind of thrust or the motivation behind that is for this exhibition I want to use tools or film that are really not known. I think maybe e some East German cameras have a kind of reputation for being unreliable or not good quality but I'm into that. So yeah I just thought I'd give you a kind of background to the tools that I used um, for this exhibition. Anyway, wherever you are in the world, um, stay safe, um, wash your hands, don't hoard up the toilet paper, um, and catch you in the next video.